He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. And then, he falls to his death. I'm just fooling. Bastion by Supergiant Games is one of my favorite games of all time. And today, we're going to recreate one of its standout features a narration system that can react to everything that the player does. But to do so, we'll have to take our programming knowledge to the next level by learning all about the observer pattern. Welcome to Programming for Production, a series here on iHeart Game Dev where we break down relatively complex software development topics so that we know how and when to use them while developing our games. By the end of this video, we should have a working prototype or you can download the project files directly on Patreon. But now, let's get started. The slimes never stood a chance. In our games, it is often necessary for different components to communicate with each other and share information. However, if these components are tightly coupled, it can be difficult to make changes to one component without affecting the others. The Observer Pattern allows us to design and build systems that are scalable, maintainable, and loosely coupled. But what does it even mean for code to be coupled? When a class or component is dependent on another in order to function, this class is coupled. When code is independent and self-contained, it is decoupled. As developers, it's important to keep our code as loosely coupled or decoupled as possible because fewer dependencies means our code will be modular and reusable, less error prone, and easier to debug. Let's start with a small example. Say we have a UI class responsible for displaying the player's health on screen and a player class that manages the player's health value. If the player is damaged, how can we ensure that the UI is updated to reflect changes in the player's health? Traditionally, we may consider accessing the UI by creating and storing a reference in the player class. When the player is hurt, we decrease the stored health by the damage value and update the UI using the reference. Alternatively, we may utilize the singleton pattern on the UI class so that we do not need the reference. But both of these options require the player class to now contain logic related to the UI class. What this means is that the player class will be dependent on the UI class because changes to the UI class implementation, such as changing the health bar code, can end up causing errors in the player class unless it's also updated. While this may not seem like a big deal in this small example, this sort of code can quickly get out of hand and be challenging to manage. What if we also wanted a sound effect to play? To have the camera zoom in on the player. For the game's lighting to dim. Or anything that isn't directly related to the player class's responsibility. Now, the player class is dependent on the implementation of all of these external classes. This tightly coupled code still works, but like all coupled code, it is difficult to modify and maintain. So how can we decouple this code? Well, let's first boil this down to the main issue of this example. We have a bunch of classes that need to know when the player is damaged, so they can each perform their own logic in response. How can we make it so that these classes can communicate with the player class and know when the player is damaged without the player class being in charge of all the external logic. Enter the Observer Pattern. The Observer Pattern is a design pattern in object-oriented programming that allows us to create a one-to-many relationship between objects. One object, known as the subject, sends notifications to its stored list of observers. It notifies that an event has occurred or its state has changed. This allows us to create reactive systems where multiple objects can respond to the same event, and the subject no longer has to directly communicate with any of the observers. In our current example, the player class is the subject in the observer pattern, and the external classes are the observers. Instead of coding the observer's methods directly into the player class, the player class can broadcast an event to any observer that is listening. The observers can then react to the event and any data shared without requiring a direct dependency on the player class. 
This successfully decouples the player or subject class from all of the observer classes, making the code more modular and easier to maintain. So now that we have a basic understanding of the observer pattern, let's dive deeper into how it can be implemented in c -sharp and Unity. The observer pattern consists of two main components, the subject and the observer. In this tutorial, we will be using an abstract class to implement the subject, which will allow any class that derives from the subject class to still inherit the mono behavior lifecycle methods. The subject will store a collection of observers, which we will represent using the iObserver interface. We'll define that after we finish the subject. We can use a list, set, or a dictionary to store these observers, depending on our specific needs. A list or set are simpler options, while a dictionary can provide better performance for larger collections. The subject class will also include three methods, addObserver, removeObserver, and notifyObservers. These methods will allow us to manage the collection of observers that are registered with the subject. AddObserver and removeObserver are public methods that use the chosen collection class to add or remove an iObserver argument to or from the collection. And the notifyObservers method is a protected method that the subject will use to notify all registered observers when an event has occurred. We can then call the onNotify method on each observer, passing in the notifyObservers argument, which is some type of data. But for this to work, we now have to define the iObserver interface and include this public method. So, the observer interface includes a public method called onNotify, which ensures that all the classes that implement this interface will provide a definition for the method. As we now know, the subject can then use this method to notify the observer of any changes to its state. And it's worth noting that the parameters of onNotify can vary based on the requirements of the specific project and what data observers might need. And that's it. This abstract subject class can be extended to create new classes whose state needs to be observed by external classes. These external classes subscribe to the subject's notifications by inheriting from the iObserver interface and adding themselves to the subject's list of observers. The subject sends notifications to its stored list of observers, and each observer defines its own logic to handle the incoming event or data. Simply put, observers subscribe to a subject, and the subject notifies its observers of its events. It is worth noting that this is just one implementation of the observer pattern, and there are alternative ways that it can be programmed. However, if you have learned something new today, or you're just enjoying this video, be sure to hit that like button so that we can reach even more awesome developers. With the fundamentals of the observer pattern and how it's used to communicate between components explained, let's take a look at how we can apply this concept in an example Unity project and build a simplified version of the Bastion narration system. Looks like the kids found some trouble. In this project, we have a fantasy environment where the player can explore and encounter monsters to fight. Inside the assets folder, there are a few audio clips that we'd like to use with our narration system, and scripts that handle player and enemy control, and UI. There is also a folder titled Observer Pattern that contains the scripts for the abstract subject class and iObserver interface. To summarize our goal, the narration system will want to be notified when the player performs specific behaviors and events. According to the observer pattern design, we can imagine the narration system as the observer and the player as the subject. Let's begin by creating a new game object titled Player Narration System and attaching a script titled with the same name. This Player Narration System class will implement the iObserver interface. And implementing the iObserver interface requires this class to define on notify. For the moment, we'll just add an empty method. Next, we'll set up the subject. Opening up the player controller script, we'll see that it currently derives from mono behavior. Instead, we'll have it derive from the subject class, noting that the subject already extends mono behavior, so it will retain the lifecycle functionality. But now, the player controller class also inherits the subject class's collection of observers and the ability to add, remove, and notify those observers. Let's get the player narration system added to the player controller's list of observers. Back in the player narration system file, we'll want to create a new serialized field of type subject for a reference to the player controller. 
And the onEnable method will invoke addObserver of the player subject and pass in this, which will add itself to the referenced player controller's list of observers. And it's a best practice of the observer pattern to remove the item from the list when it's no longer being used. So we will define the onDisable method and use removeObserver, once again passing in this as the argument. Let's quickly test the initial setup of the observer pattern to make sure that the player narration system observer is correctly receiving notifications from the player controller subject. We'll add a log to onNotify and simply invoke the notifyObservers method in the start method of the player controller script. Dragging the hero into the player narration system subject field and entering play mode. Awesome! It looks like everything is working as expected. Now, we can make some adjustments to customize the Observer Pattern's implementation for this specific project with the basic narration system. We want the narration system to play specific audio clips when the player subject performs certain actions. To do this, the onNotify method of the player narration system will need to receive some data that identifies which action the player performed. That will allow the player narration system to know which audio clip to play. But just like there are multiple ways to implement the Observer Pattern, we can take different approaches to how we share this required information about the player's actions. A simple approach would be to pass strings to onNotify, identifying what the player was doing. But this means that we can pass any string to these methods, which lacks type safety and can lead to unsupported values being given to the method without throwing a compiler error. A safer and more readable alternative that we'll use today are enums, which allow us to assign each action to a constant. Creating a new script in the editor, we will title it Player Actions. We'll delete all of the import and mono behavior and replace class with enum. Now we can add constants for each action that we want the player to broadcast. Let's take if the player jumps as our example. We would want to broadcast a jump enum from the player controller script using notify observers. But for this to work, we'll need to update the parameter values of onNotify and notifyObservers in the subject and iObserver interface. Now, updating the onNotify method of the player narration system to accept the parameter, we can add our own custom logic for when to play the audio clip. For this example, we can increment a stored jump count variable tracking how many times the jump action has been received in a short period of time. If it reaches a certain threshold, an audio clip will be triggered and play. Otherwise, it resets the count using a coroutine. Now all we need to do is create a serialized reference to the audio clip for jumping. We'll call it Jumping Audio Clip and find a way to play it. The standard way to play audio in Unity is through the audio source component. In the inspector, let's add the component directly to the player narration system game object. And we can also drag the jumping clip asset to the new open field. Then in our code, we can create a member variable titled audio player and get the component reference in the awake method. Now when the condition is met for the jumping audio clip to play, all we need to do is set the jumping clip as the audio sources clip and use the play method. Testing in play mode and jumping past the threshold and the kid just keeps jumping around. Success, we have our narrator. We have now implemented the observer pattern to create a decoupled narration system where events such as the player jumping are broadcasted by the subject and handled by the observer. It just keeps jumping around. Of course, we also want to add more actions and logic that track different player actions. Like if the player has been running or standing for extended periods of time, attacking enemies or dying, etc. We'll add new enums for each action and call notify observers in the player controller at the appropriate times. Now, we just need to modify the onNotify method to handle multiple actions. The fastest way that this can be done is using a switch statement, with each case set to one of the actions and corresponding logic in each block. However, if we want a solution that can scale, we can use a dictionary and assign each action with a custom handler method. With a few finishing touches of your own to the project, here's how this basic narration system can turn out. Looks like the kids found some trouble. Kids' health's looking a little low. These slimes never stood a chance. The kid just keeps jumping around. Okay, we have a good understanding of the observer pattern, 
and we now have a simple implementation of the narration system. There are a couple of changes that can make it even more generic and extendable though. If you're interested in seeing a more advanced project that can queue, prioritize, and nest audio clips, observe multiple subjects, and includes concepts like scriptable objects and the command pattern in addition to the observer pattern, leave a comment below letting me know. Awesome job. In the future, we'll take a look at even more programming patterns and continue learning all about procedural animation. If you want direct access to this project's files, you can grab them and a bunch of awesome perks by supporting the channel over on Patreon. And as always, I want to shout out the current patrons for selecting this video's topic and the continued support of the channel. You all help to make this channel happen. With an extra special shout out to TarotDev, Jupe, Rob Malco, and OneBeats for the top tier support. Jump into the channel Discord if you're interested in joining an awesome growing community of developers just like yourself. But that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.